Welcome to Get to Know Solano with your host, Larry Raglan. Hi, this is Larry Raglan with Get to Know Solano, and we're here in Vacaville, California, in front of the offices of Democratic State Senator Lois Wolk. There's a Second Amendment rally out here, and I want to find out exactly what these people are upset about. Let's go talk to some of them right now. So we're here with Don. Don, tell us why are you out here this morning? What is it that you're carrying the flag for? What brings you out today? I feel, and in California especially, that our Second Amendment rights are becoming are coming under attack. If you look up the word infringe in the dictionary, it means you're not supposed to tamper with it, you're not supposed to mess with it, you're not supposed to try and hijack it. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of the politicians, Lois Walk especially, has an office in this building. She's part of the gang. So what particular about Lois Walt is, is got you upset? Are, are there particular oh, votes that she's made? She's my representative. Right. Every vote she makes is with the anti-gun crime. And then, of course, she always qualifies that with a statement about, well, I'm all for the legal gun owners to have guns. I don't mind that a bit. And then she goes and votes for every rule she can against the government. So being out here bringing awareness, what do you hope comes out of this? You know, I... I'm a realist. I don't think too much will come out of it. The state's run by Democrats who are all anti-gun. They're going to get what they want. If the governor signs it, I'm hoping the NRA files some lawsuits. To uh, fight it. But I, I, what I want to get is I don't want the people of California to think that there isn't any opposition to this right. crap. So you get a handful of people who are, no, we're not going to put up with it. Are we going to change the way the Democrats vote? No but people will know that there is opposition. And if there was one message that you could convey to the average citizen, to the youth of the country, what would it be in regards to the Second Amendment? I'm a law-abiding guy. I own some guns. I'm not doing anything bad with those guns. Leave me alone. Thank you, Don. We appreciate your time. So I'm here with Paula. Paula, thank you for joining us today. What exactly brings you out here this afternoon? Um, just the Tea Party stand on guns. Tea Party stand Second on guns. Amendment rights. And why in front of the offices of Senator Lois Wolk? Is there a particular vote that she's made in regards to the Second Amendment, or is there anything in particular that you feel is important? You're going to have to cut this from the tape, but I just don't like her party's stand on anything. Right, right. And, and out of anything that you've done today, what do you hope to, to get out of it? Do you, do you hope that the youth will be energized or that the average citizen will have a better idea of Second Amendment rights? Or what is it that you hope to get out of this? Yes, everything that you just said, plus I own two guns. I love to shoot, and I don't, I don't want anyone to take that away from me. Okay. Well, thank you, Paula. Appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Thank you. We're here with Tony now. Tony, why don't you tell us, let's see your sign first of all. Gun control is not about guns, but about control. What do you mean by that when you say that? Well, um, it is about control. I believe that a, a large faction of this country wants to control everything we say, do, and, and feel. And uh, I believe in the Constitution, and we, uh, it's being attacked right now, and we need to get back to what the Constitution, it's a very it's a very plain and forward uh, document, and um, it, it's it's pretty darn good. And and when you start straying from it, you start having all kinds of problems. Now we're in front of the uh, offices of Democratic Senator uh, Lois Wolk. Is there anything in particular about her voting record that's turned you off to what she's done? Yes. First of all, I'm a Republican. Therefore, most anything she wants, I don't. And um, the whole uh, the California legislature is trying to come down on us as hard as the federal government is as far as controlling everything we say and do. Now we've been seeing Second Amendment protests all around the country. What do you think this grassroots organization, this organizing, getting the word out, do you think that it's going to have an effect on the future of America? Well, I certainly hope so. Um, my husband's been a lifelong hunter and I've done a little bit with him, not a lot, but um, hunting is a, a, a really great sport and get, uh, young people who can become involved in that, uh, maybe keep them off the street, learn a respect for guns. Mm -hmm. Guns certainly need to have a good, healthy respect. And uh, children who go through hunter safety courses and things anyway. like that learn those sorts of things. And uh, that's, that's the future is the young people. Mm -hmm. And so I hope they, 
they grasp that. If there is one message that you would like to get across to all Americans regarding the Second Amendment, what would it be? It is, it is our right to keep and bear arms and to do so safely, but nobody has a right to infringe upon that, that amendment. Right. Thank you, Tony. You're Appreciate very your welcome. time. Thank you. I'm here with Colleen Britton. Now, Colleen, what brings you out today? I see your sign, nice neon green, protect our Second Amendment rights. What is so important about the Second Amendment that you feel that you need to come out and protest? Well, for one thing, our state legislature has been uh, attempting to pass nearly 20 bills. There's this. 20 bills? 20, there's, I think there's 18 or something like that. It's way far above what they need to do to protect the citizens. Uh, so they've gone way overboard to infringe on the rights. They want to tax bullets, they want to limit the size of the magazine clips, mm -hmm. uh, you know, make it illegal for, uh, I don't know, for, for uh, the way you keep your guns in your house. Mm -hmm. they, they're just making so many laws that it gets to the point where um, no one can be a, an owner of a gun and still be a, a law-abiding citizen. No. They're, they're in, in end deal is they want to get rid of guns. Get rid of guns. And now, that's what, a huge infringement on my rights. On your rights. Yeah. Now, what is it about uh, Democratic State Senator uh, Lois Walt? The, why, why her office? Is there anything in particular that yes. she's done? What, she's tell us. She's here, for one thing. Oh, she's here today. Okay, well, maybe no, we can not, get her to come well, down. She's not here in her office. Oh, uh, got you. Office, but her office is close. Right. And, um, you know, it's kind of like the old song when you, uh, you can't love the woman. When, you're, when the woman you love isn't near. Yeah. Yeah. You you love the woman <laughs> who is near, so right? We, are, we can't all go to Sacramento all the time right. to lobby and, and meet with these people. But because her office is here, we can speak here mm -hmm. on the street and let our, our opinions be known to the public. It's one way that we can uh, easily uh, voice our opinion. Okay. And no, it, 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 if Senator Wolk was here right now, what would you say to her in regards to the Second Amendment? Well, uh, Second Amendment, I would say that, uh, stop passing bills that infringe on our on our rights as uh, as citizens. And um, and she's you know passed a lot of our you know been responsible for a lot of other laws that uh, are going to be infringing on our rights in other ways. Uh, for one thing, the uh, uh, lowering the the uh, rate of bonds from a uh, two-thirds majority mm -hmm. vote, taking things away from the, the voters and, uh, uh, you know, making it 55%. They're, they're mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just, they want more money. And what they want more money and control. More money and more and control. Uh, they're coming to our back pockets to get it. Right. So. So do, what, do you, what do you hope to get out of this today by having a group of concerned citizens come out and express their feelings? My what do you hope to get out of it? to draw attention. We want to wake people up. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, get more people uh, aware of what's going on in their community, in their state, in their country. People are walking around in a fog. They need to be more alert and in tune to what's happening in the world around them and their community than just playing on Facebook or games or whatever. They mm -hmm. need to wake up and smell the roses because things are happening and uh, they're going to be a victim if they don't um, don't stand up for their rights. Okay. Use it or lose it. Thank you, Colleen. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm out here with Velda. Velda has a great sign. Why don't you show us your sign here? It's a great sign. Gun control debate was settled in 1791. Velda, what do you mean by that when you say, oh, there's more. A last resort against tyranny. So would you say that you believe we're living in a, tyranni in a tyrannical times? Yes. And why is that? Um, because um, we, I don't think we've stood up for our rights uh, and, and what the Constitution, what it was originally intended to do, and that was to give us the right to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit. Well, actually, let me back up. Mm -hmm. You know, the Constitution doesn't give us our rights, it protects our rights. Right. And, and that's what um, we all need to be realizing and fighting for, is that our rights will be protected. Our founding fathers were, I believe, geniuses, and they were led by God, and um, they, they put together a, a, a package that that has such awareness in it of where our rights come from, actually, and then um, what we need to do to protect them. And one of those things that we need to do to protect them is um, the right to bear arms. Now, what do you fear would happen if we ever get to the point where the Second Amendment was ratified so Americans wouldn't have the right to keep and bear arms? Is that something that you worry about? I am concerned about it. Um, 
what happened in Germany. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can you can go Good through point. history and see that um, uh, tyranny upon the people by the government mm -hmm. always was preceded by confiscation of firearms. Now, where does Senator Wolk fit into this? Has she made votes against the Second Amendment? As far as I understand, and I really don't know the whole story, but she is um, apparently in favor of limiting people's rights to uh, to bear arms, mm -hmm. in, at least in the state of California. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, the, the ironical thing about that is a public servant being in uh, uh, serving the public and being elected by the public, it's not their responsibility to come and make things about them. Right. It is their responsibility and their oath and their promise to the people when they were elected that they would protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against, and the Constitution of California, if you're a Californian, mm -hmm. um, against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And they step in and by trying to change it and not defend it, they actually become the enemy. If, now, so if, if there was one thing that you'd like to get across with people driving by, people walking by, what would you like to get them to understand in a nutshell? What's the, the core of it? Um, that number one, um, the whole premise of this, that it's for our safety, is, is a lie. It's wrong and it's a lie. And I would like to ask any person trying to make laws, what law could they pass now that is already not in force that would keep guns unqualified out of the hands of criminals and out of the hands of juveniles and out of the hands of insane people. What law could they force that or that could they pass that would do that? Right. I don't think they have an answer for that. Instead, they think that by for, uh, passing a law that keeps guns out of the hands of uh, ordinary citizens is going to protect us against All right, somehow reduce crime. Like, the bad guys won't use guns. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, we can't do that. Right. The law says we can't. Right. Okay. Right. You know, so what law would they pass? What law would they pass? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Velda. We appreciate thank your you. time. Thank, thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. Now, I'm here with Paul Schechter, who's one of the events organizers. Paul, what exactly brings you out here today with the rest of the people? I know you have your signs talking about the Second Amendment, but what it, exactly about the Second Amendment is it that you want people to understand today? Californians are not being properly represented by representatives like Senator Lois Wolk who are misinformed and are giving, getting bad advice from their advisors. They don't understand the issue. They are, they are offering the wrong solutions to the problem. Now, does Senator Wolk have specific bills that she's passed or things that she advocates for that are against gun rights? Absolutely. Some of the bills in uh, what are called the Life Act by the Jewish Affairs Public Affairs Committee, they call it Life Saving Intelligence Firearm Enforcement, SB 374 by Steinberg. SB 396 by Hancock, prohibiting high cap magazines. SB 53 by DeLong, DeLeon, which would require ammunition permits. Mm -hmm. SB 683 by Block, which would require a certificate to buy a long gun. And on and on and on. So you have plenty of evidence pointing towards her anti-Second Amendment absolutely, position. Absolutely. Lois Wolk is a smart woman. She's got it right on the environment. She's got it right on the Delta. And I don't know why she's carrying water for the Sacramento Cabal. She is doing her Solano County constituents a disservice by not representing our views and getting the solution wrong. Now, which she, she is, she is targeting law-abiding gun owners like ourselves instead of targeting violent criminals. Mm -hmm. So, which one of these bills bothers you the most? I, I'm assuming all of them have different aspects that are anti-Second Amendment. But which one bothers you the most that people need to really pay attention to? Uh, the bill by Steinberg, Daryl Steinberg, who's uh, Senate Pro Tem. SB 374, it would make felons out of 
Everyone who owns a semi-automatic rifle, including a 22 rimfire rifle, uh, it would ban uh, magazines, detachable magazines, and it would make felons out of people who already own them. It would require registration, just like the Nazis did in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. So you're saying basically that they're, they're trying to get rid of gun rights altogether. They, they're, they're advancing incrementally, and since some of the recent tragedies that we've seen, they think that their opportunity is now to impose gun control legislation on Californians. Now, are there, are there senators who are pro-Second Amendment that you can look towards or the, the people can look towards to help stand up against these type of things? Absolutely. Uh, like who? Representative Donnelly, for example, has been a, uh, a longtime pro-gun uh, uh, representative. And we have sheriffs all over the state of California who have stated publicly and in letters that they will refuse to enforce any laws that violate the Second Amendment to the Constitution. Mm. And these laws violate the Second Amendment to the Constitution. We don't want our representatives violating their oath of office to protect and defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. If they violate their second amendment their oath of office they ought to step down from office so reaching out to other americans that may not know what's going on or even the youth that aren't necessarily paying attention what would you say to them in as it pertains to the second amendment the second amendment is is unequivocal and very clear it says the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And all of these proposed bills are grossly infringing on our constitutional rights. Okay. Well, thank you, Paul. I appreciate your time. Good luck. Thank you very much for having me. So I'm here with Al and Suzanne, and they came all the way from San Francisco to Vacaville, California to help us understand the violation against the Second Amendment rights that they believe are going on. Al, what brings you out here today? Just exactly what you said. I see that they are trying to remove our rights to defend ourselves. And the Second Amendment is in the Constitution because it recognizes a right. It does not give us a right, it recognizes the right. <laughs> and it says that the government, in all forms, shall not infringe it. Mm -hmm. Well, I see governments at all levels trying to infringe and working on more. And, and so being out in front of the offices of Senator Lois Walk, is there anything in particular that she's done that's gotten your attention? Well, I'm, I'm familiar with Senator Walk being from another jurisdiction. Right. But I'd say to anyone who intends to take away the arms of people who legitimately own them, that uh, you, you won't succeed and you'll make it very perilous for yourselves and others if you try. Now, ma'am, what bothers you the most about the ongoing argument about the Second Amendment? Because what they're doing is both unconstitutional and unlawful. And uh, they have no right to remove our right of self-defense. Mm -hmm. That's criminal. And that's something that you felt adamant about for a while. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. As, as I told uh, your friend here, uh, I'm a descendant of the Mayflower. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, William Brewster of the Mayflower and a signer of the Declaration of Independence. So you have an ancestry that goes with this as well. Yes. So do you, do you feel that not only is it your duty as an American citizen, but a duty to your ancestors to help uphold the Second Amendment? Oh, yes. You, you put it very well, yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm completely in agreement with that. So if, if there is one thing that both of you would like the viewers out there to understand about why you're here today, why the Second Amendment is so important, what would it be? It's, it's so important today because all of our rights are under attack. Mm -hmm. When someone proposes to rob me and limit what I can do with what I have left, mm -hmm and threatens to jail me at the least provocation for a lot of things that I've never even heard of, 
He's setting up the preconditions for which I may wish to retaliate. Mm -hmm. I may wish to prevent him from doing it by force if necessary. And he's trying to remove my means of having that force. But that's why the founders put that in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. It's why the Constitution would never have been ratified by the states if they had not put that in there. If, if they had said that you can't talk against the government, if they had said you can't rebel against the government, if they'd said that to the people who've just got through rebelling against their government, all right. they would never have had that constitution passed. It, it wouldn't have flown at all. It wouldn't have flown at all. all right. So it, it's, it's in there because they saw what happened when, when a government, in that case the British government, decided to impose unjust laws on us and do all manner of bad things to us. Mm -hmm. and, and they said, no, we're not gonna have that. If there was one thing that you could say to the people out there, what would it be? What would it be? Don't leave yourself defenseless. Um, the, the, the right of self-defense is a natural law which extends to every living thing it tries to stay alive and they're removing a means for us to protect ourselves so think about it in fact the uh, gun control laws were originally set up to control blacks from having guns mm -hmm. that's true and uh, so they're just trying to expand the franchise and leave us defenseless mm. don't, don't let them do it don't let them do it to you well i think with that that's a good point don't let them do it to you al Sam. Thank you, Larry. Ma'am, thank you for your time. I'm You're here welcome. with Sierra and Anthony. And the reason I found them so compelling is because they are young. Sierra, what brings you out here today in regards to the Second Amendment? Well, this is our right as an American. As an American, we have the right to bear arms. Mm -hmm. And they are trying to take away our right. It says right here, not be infringed. They're exactly doing the exact opposite of that. They're changing mm -hmm. the Second Amendment. And Anthony, what do you feel? I mean, you're a young man. Does it bother you that you don't see more young people out here standing up for the Second Amendment? It does, because me, I personally would love to have the opportunity to protect my family if someone came into my home trying to cause harm. And if they take this right away, how am I supposed to do that? So is it fair to say that you fear for your future in regards to the Second Amendment? Oh, yes. most definitely. So we, if you could say anything to your the other young people out there that need to be paying attention to this, what would you say to them? Get educated and fight for your right. Always. Always. All right. Thank you, Sierra. Thank you. Anthony, good luck. All right. Thank you. So I'm here with George. Now, George is here standing up for his Second Amendment rights. George, let's take a look at your sign. No weapon is illegal, they're just undocumented and awaiting amnesty. Why this sign? Why is it so important? Because it shows the hypocrisy of the government that they're uh, more concerned with helping somebody come here illegally than they are protecting uh, the public, so Second Amendment rights, which is uh, it's totally absurd. How dare the government? It doesn't say uh, the government decides if you have Second Amendment rights or not. We have them, and the average citizen uh, doesn't need some government critter that's uh, supposed to represent us doing 100 percent the opposite. It's so you feel over time, incrementally, that the government has attacked your Second Amendment rights? Uh, yes. Where do you fear that that could lead to in the future if things aren't changed? Well, it can lead to a totally totalitarian uh, form of government if where the public has no rights at all and we're just uh, slaves uh, to whatever some tyrant wants to do. Just look at uh, a lot of places in the rest of the world. Um, we're one of the few countries that um, at one time had a free government and it's just steadily going downhill and it needs to stop and it needs to stop right now. So you're saying you, you, we're in danger of not only losing our Second Amendment rights but our basic freedoms, period. Exactly. Just look at what's happening with uh, the NSA. Right, um, right, the, the NSA scandals. The, the, instead of going after the criminals and government that did the things they shouldn't be doing, they're trying to uh, get the people that uh, blew the whistle. The, the people that blew the whistle should be uh, really commended, and the people that are doing the bad things should be the ones that are uh, going to uh, get mo and, and 
other places that um, the government seems to like to put people these days. Now, we're out in front of Democratic Senator uh, Lois Walk's office. Is there anything in particular that she has done that has caught your attention as well, far as Second Amendment violations? Well, she is definitely not somebody that's for the Second Amendment. And she's also never seen a tax that she doesn't love. She stated that in in uh, public, and it's also been in the newspaper. She said that, that she's yeah, never she, seen a tax that she doesn't love? She, the way she put it was that she thinks taxes should be much higher than what they are. Mm. And if you check her record, you'll see that she never votes uh, in favor of lowering taxes. It's always in favor of increasing taxes. Mm -hmm. And so with the, with the recent stories in the news, like the Trayvon Martin case that involved firearms, obviously a lot of attention has been brought to it. The president has chimed in. If you could sit down and talk to President Obama right now in regards to the Second Amendment, what would you say to him? He better get on the right side of the Second Amendment because um, the way he's going is not the way to go. We do not need more restrictions. We need more freedom. The, 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 People that are causing the problem is not the average citizen. The average citizen is not going berserk with firearms. So, but what do you say to a senator that says, well, they have access to these weapons, we need to take all the weapons off the street? What well, would you say to that? People have access to cars. The weapon is not the problem, it's the people that's right. the problem. Right. If, if, if you got somebody that it's a problem person, you need to deal with the problem people. You don't deal with uh, law-abiding citizens. And if there's one message that you could get out to the people that maybe they didn't see you out here today, but they're watching this video, what would you say to them today? Uh, you need to get involved with government and watch everything they do because they're not here to represent you the way they're supposed to. You need to make sure that they do represent you because if you sit back and just let them do what they want to do, the next thing you know, you won't have any rights. you be like Nazi Germany. Mm. Okay, well, thank you for your thank time, you sir. Much. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, I'm here with Bob. Bob, can we take a look at your sign? What does it sure. say here? Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. And what does that mean? Explain that to us, Bob. We've had these rights from our forefathers because under British rule, they have very little rights. Mm -hmm. If they wanted to raise the price on tea, they raised the price on tea. Nobody said a word until they got together and they had an American Revolution. Well, ever since that, our forefathers put in our Constitution items that they knew should not be infringed upon. Mm -hmm. Any of these freedoms should not be infringed upon. The First Amendment, the Second Amendment, all the way through, you know, they're ours, our amendments. They're not the government's amendments. The people's they're amendments. amendments. Right. Mine, yours, I was in the military for 21 years. And I fought. Thank you for your service. Everywhere. Why? For all these people who are standing over here with signs in, them, in their hands, and for all the people who drive by and honk. This government that we have today is outlawing our rights as citizens to own firearms. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're afraid of us. It's the only reason. What other reason could it be? Mm -hmm. It's not because people use guns to defend themselves. Right. It's not because people use guns to hunt with and supply food for the family. It's because people have guns. If people don't have guns, then the government can tell you to do anything they want to do. So you're saying by them trying to eliminate the Second Amendment, they can eliminate any other any right of that the you other have. Ones they right. Want to. So the Second Amendment is there to back up the other amendments. That's that's our protection against them taking away any other amendment. And slowly but surely they're doing it. If they can't take our guns, they'll take our ammunition. So what would you say to the senator, like maybe Lois Wolk, who would say, well, look at some of our inner city crimes. We have people shooting each other all the time. We should take the guns off the streets. What do you say to that? I say it's not the guns. It's the people who are using the guns. The guns are only a tool. You have more doctors killing people in the United States than guns do. You have more knives kill people in the United States than guns do. More automobile accidents kill pe more people than guns do. Why are they so? afraid of guns. They don't want out automobiles or knives mm -hmm. or fire. All right. But because guns are a tangible item, they can remove them. Mm -hmm. Remove them from criminals. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. But I'm a law-abiding, honest American citizen. All my guns are registered, and I should have that right. 
take that away right away, just inch by inch by first taking the ammunition away, putting that away, mm -hmm. then make me a criminal because I have a gun that holds 18 rounds. So what would you now say? I can't use that gun. I can't sell that gun if these laws pass. I can't sell it. Or you can't sell them. I'm so stuck with it. What would you say to the citizen that doesn't understand that? The, the citizen that doesn't understand the importance of the Second Amendment, what would you say to them to make them get it? I would explain to them that our forefathers put it in there, put that Second Amendment right in there. As a militia, yes, but as private citizens, and the Supreme Court has already stated, they agree with that. Mm -hmm. So once the Supreme Court says, yeah, the private citizens are our militia, in case our military goes bankrupt or under, or we don't have a military anymore, citizens grab their firearms and come out in the streets and fight. I'm sure you would. I know mm -hmm. I would. I know anybody else would. And if you didn't have one, your neighbor had two or three. Get one from them. He would arm you. So do, do you feel that you're running out of time to get the message out about the Second Amendment? Yes, I believe we are, because we have a governor, Governor Brown, who is, an, in my opinion, is anti-gun. Not everybody's, but in my opinion, because of the bills that he has passed so far. Mm -hmm. And the bills that are coming up for his signature are going through the committee, the safety committee, and then it goes to his desk. Once it goes to his desk, all he has to do is use his magic wand and make that a law. We already have those laws, the 10 round rule. Mm -hmm. The 10 round magazine law is already there. Why make another one? Why say, because I have 17 rounds in my 22, I can't use my 22 and I can't sell it anymore. It's already stated that you can only have 10 round magazines. Well, mine's a tubular fed magazine that came out a long time before any of this mm -hmm. ever came up. So, you know, I agree, 10 rounds is fine with me. Normally when I'm hunting, I only have three rounds. That's fine. All right. But my Second Amendment right state, I can have it. Don't take them away. Don't take them not away. Not inch by inch, not pound by pound, not anyway. Don't take them away. Leave them alone. And what's the one thing that you would like to say to the viewer out there that's not here, that's not out with a sign? What would you say to them for why you're out here today, what they need to take away from this? I would say to protect all of your rights, you need to support the Second Amendment right. That's the only right you have that's going to support all your other amendments, your freedom of speech, and your freedom of assembly, and your freedom of religion. It's all there. You lose the Second Amendment right, the government can tell you whatever they want you to tell you, and you got to do it, because there's no way to fight back. All right. Well, thank you, Bob. We appreciate well, your time. You're welcome. Thank you. So as you can see, there are more than enough concerned citizens, not only in Vacaville, California, but the nation that are really worried about their Second Amendment rights. There have been recent stories in the news, like the Trayvon Martin case, that has brought firearms to the forefront. But I don't think it's to the point where we should say that we need to get rid of the Second Amendment and abolish all weapons. And that's what these citizens are saying. Only time will tell if America will wake up in time or if we'll be doomed to repeat our past. This is Larry Raglan signing off. Three questions that I have. The first one is, I would like to know who is responsible and why nobody has been brought up for the responsibility of the border guard who was killed with American guns that the Americans sent across the border. I'd like to know the, the, the answer to that. Eric Holder hasn't been re held responsible for it. The IRS and their, their uh, tagging the special interest groups. The, the conservative party, groups. The right. conservative groups. Nobody has been held responsible for that. How long has that been going on? Three months, four months? Nobody has came up. Nobody's being held responsible for it. The NSA uh, and their targeting of special interest groups. Nobody's been held responsible for it. Why not? That's my three questions. Maybe one day we'll get an answer for him, Bob. Well, you, Maybe probably, we'll... you probably won't get it from Lois Wong. No, we won't. Uh, I don't think <laughs> so. I can give you the answer to that. What's that? It's with the 14th Amendment. Get to Know Solano is brought to you by Vacaville's very own Choker Films. Video production, editing, and compositing services.